All right, let's talk about the Grizzlies. So besides the Brooklyn Nets, I don't know if there is a team that is as talented as Memphis where I have as much uncertainty about them over the next however many seasons. And when I say uncertainty, that does not mean in a negative sense. I mean, for one, I'm wondering, what is Desmond Bain's ceiling given the offensive jump he had in year two? John Morant made strides as a shooter in this previous season. I mean, if he's got the pull-up jumper to counter when teams go under screens on him, for example, or just drop on him, then at that point, he's going to be impossible to defend. Jaron Jackson also has an injury at the moment, and he's not going to be ready to go when the season begins. We've got Dylan Brooks on a one-year deal. Brandon Clark is on the last year of his rookie contract. Steven Adams also about to be a free agent. Look, man, I think Adams matters for these guys quite a lot. His screen setting with Ja, that makes all the sense in the world. I think they ran a few more, like, handoff plays with Adams as the guy with the ball of this previous season than you might expect a team to do with Steven Adams. Defensively, he and Jared make sense. It just the thing with Adams is, like, how far do you really want to go with that extension? My gut is that the Grizzlies, at the most, at the absolute most, would go three years And I would more so bank on they would really want to do two years. But I do want to go back to Desmond Bain for a little bit. The guy has shot well over 40% from three for the last five years. As in his two years in the NBA, three years in college, and it's not just catch and shoots. I mean, he he was attempting like pull-ups on fast breaks if the defense was giving him the space. They ran more off-ball actions for him, you know, setting down screens for him, that sort of thing. He also started experimenting a little bit more with the mid-range this previous season. I think all of it just suggests he can handle more shot attempts. And the other thing, too, is while, yeah, he's not as good of a ball handler as he is a three-point shooter right now, the handle definitely got better. He's good enough to take guys off the dribble if he's got an angle on him, like after a catch or whatever. And I feel like he's already kind of tapping into using his physicality to score around the rim a little bit more, which could lead to his free throw attempts going up. So, yeah, the Desmond Bain scoring potential is real. Well, of course it is. He already had 18 points a game last season. Let's talk about Jaron Jackson for a bit. I think we all kind of get it with Jaron at this point before we get to the injury. I mean, when he's out there, I mean, he's just one of the best defensive players in the league. Like last season, everything that was the hope for him on defense pretty much happened. Yes, the fouls still creep up at times. Yeah, the post game's got to get better. Yes, the footwork around the basket's got to get better. The three has to get more consistent, but his three was really good like the year before he got hurt. Not really concerned with that, even if the shooting form is a little out there. But he's going to be out for a while now. And we've already seen this team be amazing when John Morant is out. So what's going to happen with Jaron? Well, I think you start to think about just what are their options there. I mean, it's possible that Brandon Clark is your starting four. He uh, probably gives you the most screen-setting juice of all of your options. And him and John Morant, okay, that's something. You can get your Brandon Clark floaters going on in the starting lineup. Of course, they're not going to be able to replace Jaron's defense. Another possibility for that spot could be Zaire Williams. I feel like Zaire is quietly not mega important, but decently important to how the Grizzlies look over the next however many seasons. I think they're banking on him pretty hard, man. I mean, look, he's 6'8". He's a good athlete. He's got a plus wingspan. I think it's like 6'10", 6'11". And in summer league, they were using him a bit more as a ball handler which I think is the right move because for most of his rookie season, it was mostly play off of other guys and just pick your spots. You know, open, catch, and shoot three. He definitely needs to gain some weight. But if it can hit for Zaire specifically, then that's a real hit given that he could just be the type of wing player that every team in the league is looking for pretty much, right? And to have that next to Jaron Jackson, that would be awesome. And this is partially why the Grizzlies are so interesting to me, not just for right now, but for over the next few seasons because... I can picture them going one of two ways, which is you look at a guy like Zaire Williams or David Roddy, who they just drafted, and it's, we're holding on to these guys no matter what. The other idea is we've got all of our draft picks. The T-Wolves just made their all-in trade. And then you have the Warriors, the Suns, the Mavs, the Nuggets, the Pelicans, the Clippers. These teams aren't going anywhere, although Chris Paul's age matters in that. And the Lakers are always looming in a if the stuff around LeBron and AD gets figured out, then here they come again, right? And so it's just like, how aggressively did the Grizzlies really want to get there? I mean, as far as this offseason was concerned, I don't think they were really rumored for anybody. There was that little thing about them and Kevin Durant, but I don't think that ever really got anywhere. It also poses the question of what type of move would this team need to make? I mean, you look at Dylan Brooks, who has been, I think, a little bit of a divisive player. I think 
overall he ends up being a positive. I do see a bit of Marcus Smart in him where defensively he's there, the physicality is there, the heart of the team and the culture setter is all there, and also the shot selection can be frustrating. But with that being said, what would your better options be over Dylan Brooks? I guess one idea would be a wing who gives you more length than Brooks and can still make threes and switch across a couple positions defensively. The other idea would be to bring in like another big-time scorer next to John Morant. But of course, you don't want to sacrifice too much defense. Also, again, like what big-time score is available right now? Like kind of nobody. Of course, we just saw Donovan Mitchell moved. And well, I mean, I don't think there was ever really a anything about the Grizzlies sniffing around for Mitchell. And I also think Memphis for right now can bank on, like, let's see where Desmond Bain's scoring ends up. And Jaron, even if he's not going to be here for a minute this season, eventually he's going to be here. And I think we all agree that there is another level to get to with Jaron's offense. So for what all that means, I don't know. But they comfortably sit right in the middle of a very, very, very competitive Western Conference.